You ready, Brett? Yeah, of course. Really? Yeah. Okay. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Obsessed. Um, we've got Brett here today. Thank goodness. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited for this episode. It's going to be a really, really special one. I know. I'm, I'm really excited. And also, like, we didn't get, like, some one-on-one. Like, last time I was here, Sodi was here, yeah. which, like, obviously uh, which great. Which of course. But we just need some, like, one-on-one time. It's, I feel like we never get no, one-on-one never. time. <laughs> which is funny. It, we're laughing because the only person I've seen for like three weeks is Brett one yeah. one. Um, That's why I'm devastated. This is hysterical. Like, you're gonna be gone for like a long time. I'm devastated too. Like genuinely, it's gonna like change everything. I'm really. I'm like genuinely. I think that's why I feel a little sick yeah. this morning. Half of your heart. Half of my heart. Like to leave you and to leave Johnston's Marie. Yeah. Thankfully, Izzy Izzy Bug is staying here and watching him, but it's still. He's in good hands. Like, I'm really, I'm really, really genuinely, like, I could throw up talking about it. Yeah. So let's not. Well, also, like, mm. can I bring up? <laughs> what? I want to bring up the the sucking. Oh, the sucking. Can oh. I bring up? Yeah, the you can bring up the sucking. Can I bring up the fact that someone. People are getting <laughs> mad at me. I saw a comment about how people, yeah, like, how people are like, I can't do, like, the sucking anymore. Um, I share my life, and that's the biggest part of my life. No, truly. Um, also, like. I personally, well, to explain to everyone who doesn't know the sucking, John since Marie does <laughs> suck the life out of Brooke's neck every single night. Well, neck has been he has he's off the neck. <laughs> yeah. Now it's just cheeks and eyelids and and. But it's I because you even. took away the pri- the took, neck privileges. I took away the neck privileges, and now it's almost worse. So. But people are getting upset and they don't like it. But I like I'm constantly outsourcing the like neck sucking content. Like I love seeing it. I think it's so great and funny and like. Also, you are a mother. That's what. That's how I feel, Brad. It's like this is part of life. You wouldn't say, like, you wouldn't say this to a mother breastfeeding. Well, also, it's like a single mother too. Yeah. Where it's like single mothers like can never win. Never, Brad. It's like fucked up. It's like genuinely. kicking me when I am down, like in the postpartum of it all. Also, just like and I'm you, sharing. I'm just sharing my journey. Right. And if you guys like saw to know Jonathan is to love Jonathan. Yes. Like if you met him <clears throat> IRL, you would fall head over heels I, yeah. for him. You would realize that it's like actually just like that classic Johnston. No, yeah, that's so. It's a classic, classic Johnston's mess around. Also, if he needs to suck on your face, let him suck let on him, your let face. A man like you're suck. gonna say no to a man. Like seriously. No, God. It's like no. Men never get a chance to suck these no, days. No, truly, it's it's actually disgusting. So. Thank you for bringing awareness but to then that. But again, it's a woman's fault that a man is sucking. What? He, what? <laughs> like blame In him? In what world? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of off putting. Yeah. But. Thank Anyways, you, I just had to like stand up for you in that in that setting. I really appreciate it. I know you. I know the love that you and Jonathan have. Thank you. And it's beautiful. Thank you. And it's thank motherhood. you for seeing us. So thank you, my love. Is that the confession you wanted to make to no, me? No. Okay. The confession. I thought about this in the car ride over, and I've told Kat this about you before. I'm so scared. I. <laughs> Brett said that he had something to confess to me, but we'll wait till we're on camera. So that's scary. Well, Brooke, you don't always have to be a star. I know, but you do if you are going to be in the biggest boy band in the world. I got so worked up that I had thrown up on myself in my stroller. In my 14-year-old self, I said, those are hot men. Men. And look at them now. They're like, <laughs> babies. That was kind of just like a casual interest, mm. which I guess maybe a little bit more than casual. <laughs> when I met you... Uh-oh. For the- <laughs> For the first like 10 times we hung out, I had a tough time talking to you because I genuinely think you are so funny that I was like, I can never compete with your level of humor. And so I would like, my brain would kind of shut down. Right. And so I'm glad I've gotten past this. But it was like a thing where I'm like, I felt so unfunny around you for so long because I was like, I don't even know how to speak. I felt the so, same No, you did it. No, you did it. You're just I saying was like, that. I feel like Brett will never get to know me because no. I'm not myself because I'm so in my head trying to like be on That's ex- because no. I wanted to impress you. <laughs> I literally feel, feel like I needed like a Celsius and like half an edible to even just like compete with you. I always felt like I wasn't funny. Okay. Well, which, I'm like, glad now like- I'm so at peace and I feel like I can be unfunny around you, which yeah. is like when I feel comfortable with someone. Yeah. But it did like, it was it, scary. At no, first. I was, I'm glad we had the same experience and that makes me feel way better about myself too, because I was like, I'm terrified of how funny you are. No, Brad. Oh my God. I felt the same way. Ooh. Oh, gl- <laughs> Ooh. Glad we got that. I know, off our we head. really needed to 
Yeah, but now we're back. I we're remember ba there was this one specific time at Megan and Sally Dar's old place. I, they were having some sort of party and I was talking to you and I was like, I could, I can never, <laughs> I can never compete with this man. That is so insane because I was in my head like the entire time. I was like, I don't even know what to say to this woman. <laughs> like I genuinely do not know how to speak uh, to this woman right now. Brett, that means a lot to me. But I'm glad we got past it. Me we too. just had to spend a fuck ton of time together. Yeah. And and now here we are. And now here we are. You're the godfather of my son. Oh my god. And also like his really his surrogate father too. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. No one else has really stepped up in that way. Yet. You and Patrick really. Two dads are, and yeah, one mom. Yeah, or his his found a family. Poly yeah, of sorts. a polycule of sorts. Yep. Um. Okay. Before we get into the meat of this episode, which is Wikipedia spirals, because I went on like the craziest journey this week, and I think that a lot of people can relate to just like needing to research like Hugh Hefner and ALS at like 3 a.m. You posted that that story that you posted was so without co uh, context alarming. Well, everyone was responding, was responding and was like, holy shit, I didn't know Hugh Hefner had ALS. And I was like, oh my God, he did it. Oh, I didn't even know that. Was that. A completely... I didn't know the correlation but between he Hugh Hefner. Oh. It was just, it was two okay, separate, two trains, separate of, trains of, of thought. thought. That you needed to get to the bottom of both of yeah, them. Yeah, but I just want to clear that up. Um, we'll, we'll speak about how we lost Hugh today, but it wasn't from ALS. Which, what came first, ALS or Hugh Hefner? Hugh. And what was the like train of thought where it's like, holy shit, I need to deep dive <laughs> on Hugh Hefner at three in the morning. I think it was, it was because I don't know what I saw, but I saw something Playboy related and I was like, wait, zooming out, like. How do we all feel about Playboy? Like, I didn't yeah. know if it was like something that we look at and are like, this is too male gaze oriented or if it was something that was like female empowerment. Yeah. So I was like, where do we stand on Playboy? And then, because I really truly know nothing about it besides the house bunny in that one episode yeah, of, of Curve. And I can let you know where, where we stand okay. um, as we dig deeper into it. But I do want to talk about Wicked really quick because we saw okay, it together last night. We did see night. Wicked last night. It was my first time and it was yeah. Brooke's third time. Yeah. I keep, I'm like, I've been really fucking annoying about it. I can't stop saying you I've seen it three <laughs> times. I, said, I like can't stop with the three of it all. But also like I enjoyed Wicked, but I know like that movie wasn't for me, mm -hmm. but I like, I know it is for a lot of people and I'm happy, like genuinely happy for those people. I you being one of it. them. I appreciate it. But it just like, I feel like I didn't have that spiritual of an experience right. that other people like the That's out of bodyness of it all. That's fine, Brad. I really, as long as you like appreciated it for what it for yeah. what it was. I mean, Jonathan Bailey, like insane, like truly insane. Like it, the way that man moves, sings, looks. Obviously, like when he would look at Glinda, and or. Alphaba, yes! <laughs> getting to know the cast. Yes! Um, I would like, like, actually cream my shorts. I like, know. genuinely, it was like scary. We like, I we kept whispering that we needed to change our pants. No, I was soaked like, by it the was end of. So it's really so insane, you guys. Like, I truly can't wait for everyone. Honestly, to see that it. was like one note I had. Well, okay, I didn't realize. what well, obviously, it said part one like multiple times, and I should have like picked up on that. But I assumed it was like a full story or full story and then we're doing like kind of like a sequel but it was like it really did set it up for the next one yeah um, the next one is like where all the like wizard of oz stuff okay. really comes into play i think like that's when you're like like he takes creative liberties and like you learn like how the tin man came to be and like how the scarecrow came to be okay. and, and wait so is that. dorothy gonna be in the next one she's not okay no damn but the tin man will kind of yeah okay it's kind of crazy. I was telling Brooke I had a really hard time connecting with the talking animals. I knew you would. And I didn't know. I saw it Wicked when I was like 8 to 10 on whatever Broadway and whatever Broadway. Whatever I mean. Broadway. <laughs> um, but I didn't remember there was talking animals. So that like immediately took me out. I think I had a really, really hard time with like the caretaker bear one. Oh, really? Just seeing her like waddle away, like that was, it was tough for me. <laughs> I 
like was addicted to them, especially in the Oz's ballroom when they were playing the drums. Oh, those creatures. What, what was that like? It was little, like a little wombat or yeah, something. A wombat, a little wonton. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, under, I completely understand that that can uh, take somebody out of the space. In, bro- in the Broadway performance, did they have talking animals? Y- yeah, but I think they looked more human. Okay. From what I remember. Okay. But the flying monkeys were really scary in the Broadway production as they were in the movie too as well, I thought. Yeah. I, they are... Um, yeah, they I didn't like, me. love them. I was like thinking how scared I would be watching as a kid, the flying monkey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also like I didn't realize the whole thing was about just like animals, like standing up for animals. Yeah. No, it's a political show. Yeah. Yeah. Which obviously I love the animals. Yeah. yeah like o- let them speak. Obviously you're like, addicted to that. not silence animals a any more than we already have. I have actually, and I would like an answer to this. Okay. Is that if the wizard has no power... How are the animals actually like stopping being able to speak physically? Like who's doing that? Whoa. That's my question. Isn't that the point of all of those to like do that is to get all of them to not speak? So maybe someone else. Wait, like who, who's been making them not speak? Yeah. Why time? are they losing their voices? Like right. How? Like I. No, he wants, he's, he wants to speak. The, oh, like, Madam Horrible. Yeah. I don't know. Could be. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, are they gonna like clear that up in part two? No, or I don't remember. Just... I don't remember, honestly. Yeah, because it's like obviously something's happening to something's them because now they like are losing but their But we voices. know it's not the wizard. Yeah. Um it actually is like kind of embarrassing that the wizard doesn't have power. No, it's mortifying. And that's why he has like that whole cat like he's just overcompensating. He's, he, exactly. That is like, like grade A overcomp- overcompensating. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Let's get him some powers though. <laughs> Truly. Oh my god, he would like obviously do great things with them. Yeah, so exactly. no worries. Um, okay. I do you want to dive right into Hugh? <laughs> yeah, let's do oh, it. Oh wait, I have one more thing <clears throat> to say. Sorry if I'm a little bit off kilter this episode. <laughs> it's because my book went out to publishers yesterday. And today is November 21st. And so it went out on November 20th. Which no, it went out on the 19th. And obviously I haven't eaten or slept. Um, and I've been so sickly, so I'm sorry if that's coming across. And also by the time you are hearing this episode, I will know, I will know, I will know. Well, we got some positive, we, like, I'm like a part of the team. You got some positive feedback. Well, it's cause I told the girls, like, I can't sit in silence anymore. Please let me know. Like literally any, anything that comes across your desk. And the one thing that came across their desk today was someone's reading it. And they're and enjoying, they're enjoying, and they're they're enjoying, enjoying it. it. And they yeah, are. they're enjoying it, but that doesn't mean anything yet. So. A win is a win. Yeah. So I'm like so, 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 so sick. And and like it should be great to hear that kind of news on the cruise too. On my yeah. cruise, <laughs> if it goes badly. Can we like speak about the cruise at all? Like, are you how are you feeling about the cruise? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I guess what I'm thinking about the most in regards to the cruise is the bedroom that I'll be sharing with Gabby, Noah, uh, my two stepbrothers, and my two male cousins. Okay, great. How many so beds that's are seven there? Seven people. Okay. Four twin beds and a pullout couch. <laughs> so I don't nice understand. I definitely don't understand. It's my, my understanding is also one bathroom. <laughs> and my dad loves to do this thing where, like, if he knows that like someone's gonna maybe like react poorly to something, he will start building it up like before, like to just like put you in a different headspace. So he was saying like, you guys have like this huge suite. There's a hot tub. Like you got like you can't believe. Like wish I could have this. Like yeah. I can't believe what you guys ended up with. Like y- you guys like are the luckiest kids in the world. Like so <laughs> so like I can't believe it. I looked at the floor plan. First of all, no hot tub. Like I don't know where he yeah, got that from. Maybe the b- bathtub is also a shower. Um, was your family a family that was like, oh, we can fit you all in one room, or is this like a rare like in hotel is, rooms? My family <clears throat> never took trips. Oh, okay. So this is really my first. This might be my first like big family trip, genuinely. And it's on a cruise and, and you're sharing on a, a room yeah. with 17 of your... With about, yes. So... I'm sure it'll be yeah. great, though. Oh, my God. It, it will be awesome. I am genuinely... I'm very curious. I mean, I'm excited. 
I think I'll have a lot of content if, if yeah, if nothing, if else. nothing else. And I'm excited to see Channing on Coco. Cola. Yeah. Do you guys have any plans for Coco? She wants to go to the water park. Oh my god, yeah. that'll be so fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, you definitely need to do that. So that will be something. And then thankfully after that, we have a family escape room. <laughs> Is that at Coco? On the ship. Oh, on the ship. Right? Yay. Yeah. That's going to be good. Yeah. After spending like a ton of time together, then being like trapped in a room. And then like being... after all day, like in the sun too, yeah. like oh, doing the water No, that's going to be perfect. No, I won't be tired. Have you done an escape room before? With Yes. <laughs> with those. How do you respond in an escape room setting? Complete shutdown. Okay. Yeah. Due to? At too many cooks. Okay. Too many cooks. I will watch from the side. Yeah. And I like just like looking for clues. Like. I can't understand any of the clues really, but I'll like look physically around the yeah. room to see if I spot something. Like that's what I can offer. Yeah. Like you will spot the clues, but yeah. you'll not be able to know what I, to do with yeah. them. But, no, not at all. But you all. have to spot them first. So and you are participating yeah. in helping. The and one of good. my stepbrothers is like, like savant type of genius. <laughs> so he's okay. all, it's like not even fun. Yeah. He's just like cracking the code. No, it's really crazy if like you have one person who's off kilter, uh, like in an escape room, like it like completely ruins everything. We should do one all together. Yeah. I'd like that. I think it'd be like horrible, but like it would be funny. The last one I did was with Tristan and Channing. So. <laughs> sure. I'm sure you can uh, imagine. Yeah. Comes some smaller personalities in the room. Wait, I want, I had something I need to show you. Okay. What is it? Did I send you that TikTok about the guy that got rejected from ZBT? No. Did Wait. you see this, Izzy? It's my new favorite thing that I've ever seen on the internet. Respectfully, I got... <laughs> Brett, this boy was like, I he came, he made this video and was like, I know that all of you are saying, like, you're Wicked's biggest fan. Like, no. When I got rejected from ZBT, I came home, pulled out my photo booth, and made an original piece, ZBT and I, to the wizard and I. Wait till what? you wait till you hear the piece that he okay, I'm that he made. Obviously, really excited. It's no. Did he take it? Down? Oh, it, he, he uh, took it down. There's no way. He, is it pinned? Uh, um, oh, here it is. Thank God. I'm the biggest wicked fan. I am the biggest wicked fan. What's my proof? My freshman year, when I heard that I wasn't getting he a talks. bitch, the frat that I, I, I like to, him a lot. I ran to my dorm room with tears in my eyes, and I wrote a song called ZBT and Die <laughs> to the tune of The Wizard and I about me not getting a bit. And I know what you're thinking, Max. That the ZBT story is a sorority. No, oh. frat. Okay. And you know what? Normally I'd agree with you. Like, yeah, that's that's the most depressing sad shit I ever heard. Roll the tapes. In his dorm room. Is he straight? No. Okay. When I meet CBT, no. <laughs> once I prove my worth. <laughs> when I'm in ZBT. Oh my god. What I've waited for since, since birth. <laughs> Do you think ZBT is dumb? Or like A by so small minded. Like A by so small minded. Me, Max, so insane. Truly are. And the fact that he didn't Your get a bit is. <laughs> It's even but so we'll be ZBT and I. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I am upset. Love that no. Once I'm in ZBT. <laughs> also him sitting at his desk, but you know this is like filmed on his laptop. Yeah. Once I'm in ZBT. No one thinks I'm strange. Exactly. No <laughs> that'll, 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 mm -hmm. of you. No brother. This is like so like shame. the random roommate you like get yeah, assigned no with. <laughs> has to love <laughs> like thinking about the people on his hall here. Yeah. And this gift or this curse I have. It kind of gets sad for a second. Be a last tell no one. No I am in ZBT. <laughs> One day he'll say to me, <laughs> who is so superior, shouting a boy who's so good inside, have a matching exterior. This is sad, listen. And since people here to an absurd degree, seem fixated on your sexuality, That's right. would it be alright by you, if we take care of fine like that's breaking my heart hey guys we want to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode Nutrafol 
the holiday season is here. And with that comes endless parties, indulgent treats, travel, stress, and seasonal colds. What you might not realize is that all of these things can take a toll on your hair health. Adding Nutrafol to your daily routine now can help improve your hair health heading into the new year. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand trusted by over 1 million people. See thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding in just three to six months with Nutrafol. Physician formulated with 100% drug-free ingredients, Nutrafol supplements support healthy hair growth from within by targeting root causes of thinning, including stress, hormones, aging, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism as they evolve throughout a woman's life. Building a hair growth routine is simple. Purchase online, no prescription required. Automated deliveries and free shipping keep you on track. Plus, with Nutrafol subscription, you can save up to 20%. You'll have access to free naturopathic doctor consults and a Headspace meditation membership is included. The cold, dry air of winter can be unforgiving, but your hair doesn't have to suffer. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code OWB. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and stylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code O-W-B. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code O-W-B. Hey guys, we're taking a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. I love Squarespace because it's the user-friendly platform that allows people and businesses to create professional websites without the need for technical knowledge or coding skills. Whether you're just starting out or managing your growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create, sell, and engage with your audience all in one place. Squarespace is introducing its design intelligence, combining two decades of industry-leading design expertise with cutting-edge AI technology to unlock your strongest creative potential. Squarespace Payments is also the easiest way to manage your payments in one place. Onboarding is simple. Get started in just a few clicks and start receiving payments right away. Plus, give your customers more ways to pay with popular payment methods like Apple Pay and Afterpay. You can connect social media accounts to your website in a few clicks as icons, links, or embedded feeds. Sellers can also sync their product catalog directly with Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Google to reach more customers and reduce the steps for a purchase. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash OWB to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Like, is like that that's not breaking most... my heart, but also like I would have like, like been, was going... if I saw that I would have been so fucking mean in college. If I would have, like... Imagine like how much you have to be going through it. Yeah. Well, like also like I have to give it to him. Like he put a lot of time and effort into that. I'm, like I'm his biggest fan. Yeah. I am singing ZBT and I in the shower. Of course. I love when it's like, um, what's the line about a pie? They, so, do they think the a, uh, ZB or something is dumb or like AE Pie so small minded? Like, <laughs> yes, Max, go yes. off about AE Pie. Damn. Anyway, he has does he him. have any other videos <laughs> of him singing? Or I don't is that think so. Just kind that's of a all one-off? that I've seen. I think he's kind of like a one off sensation, okay. one hit wonder. And that's not even. I don't understand how that video doesn't have eighteen billion. Views. Yeah. Oh my God, ZBT and I saw you did repost that. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, I is I think my favorite video I've ever (laughs) seen. I'm not even kidding. I wish so badly that I had my old photo booth from my my old middle school cameras because it was all me singing. What would you sing? Uh, Like every song that was ever covered on Glee. Of course. I wish I had my Glee Project audition. And what is your Glee Project audition? Oh my god, I'm, do you know about the Glee Project? No. <laughs> it was this like lifetime, I think it was lifetime, like spin-off reality, like competition show where if you won, you would get a spot on Glee. Really? And yeah. they actually did that? They actually did it. Do you remember, did you watch Glee at all? Maybe like one to okay, three never episodes. Mind. But they actually, yeah, and they were, the people that won were in Glee. Damn. Um, and like the cast of Glee would come. It was like crazy. Uh, and yeah, I had to audition. And I sent in my <laughs> tape singing back to December. Okay. And I don't, ha- I wish I had it. And did you get any feedback on that? Didn't or get just... any type of feedback. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're still, reading they're and enjoying. Reading they're reading and, and enjoying. enjoying. Yeah. Yep. Reading and so. enjoying. Awesome. Yes. Should I talk about Hugh Hefner? Yeah. Okay. Brett, as I was saying. Wait, can I hear before you get into it? Yes. What were your initial thoughts again? Cause we're going back 
on being like, is this like women empowerment? Like, hell yeah, girl power. Or is this like, oh, men are like pigs and taking right. advantage of women. I truly like didn't know where we all stood. And I guess, sorry, do you mind if I burp and Not throw up all. into the mic? And I guess I can totally have my own opinions too and figure out where I stand, yeah. which I did. But like sometimes it's nice to just know the consensus, you know? Yeah. Um, but like because I've seen like there's so much like there's like Playboy collabs with like popular brands. It's yeah. like, okay, they must, there must be, they can't be like canceled. Yeah. So I didn't, I really didn't know. But it is like, I mean, just like looking at it from a big picture, it's like one kind of older, creepy man living in like a house full of like really hot young models. You would it's think, like, but like the house bunny, no one has ever like, that's problematic. I, at least I haven't heard, like people love that movie. Yeah, like I hilarious. love that movie. No yeah. one's ever like, I don't know. I was just really, I, mean, I was just curious, Brett. That's what brought it on. I think I saw it at about 3A. At about 3A. Okay. And I also, I know he was in an episode of Curb. And that's really like the Hugh most. Hugh Hefner was? Hugh Can with I, Larry. Do you mind pulling up a picture oh, of him? Oh, I don't mind at all. Is he alive still? He uh, recently died. Damn. Damn. Not of ALS though. Just so. Not of ALS. Yeah. Like. So is that him like obviously. I think it's one of his wives. One of? He had a, Yeah. He had a few. His, yeah. Is that him in his like prime? Yes. The hairline is like insane. It's in interesting shape. I've never seen it. It's not a like it's receding. Like it's just like it's just like it's receding almost, in like one area, in, yeah. but then there's like a But then it's all like overly full in yeah. another. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Let me tell you a little about Hugh H. I would love that. Um to his family and friends, he was known simply as Hef. Oh, so <laughs> so if you feel more comfortable calling him half, I might do half <laughs> <laughs> throughout the episode. I would be fine with that, Brett. But get this, okay? Married um someone from Northwestern, which is also where he went. I'm pretty sure they had a daughter, but before his wedding with Mildred, she confessed that she cheated on him. Damn. And because of all the guilt that she had felt, she was like, you can literally sleep with whoever, whenever. And I honestly think that kind of might have been his origin story. Yeah. Like, I, I that probably, like, really fucked him and up. And then he was like, I'm not the only going to do that. I'm going to start, like, a house. I'm going to do what I'm going to do what you said. <laughs> yeah. and I'm going to raise you. Um, the Playboy man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to raise you. Classic half. Yeah, but they uh, eventually got divorced. Okay. Yeah, they, they didn't make it. But he was working at Esquire as a copywriter. Okay. okay. In his young adult professional life, he asked for a $5 raise, which I guess is like, I don't know, a lot back back in the day. I don't I still, know. I feel like that can't be too much for like a salary. I like honestly salaries and just like money, like monetary about monetary. Yeah, that, that sounds, sounds right. Yeah. Values just like it do not like resonate with me. Like I, I have no idea what that would mean, especially in a different I, time I period. I think even in 1952, a $5 raise is probably not asked just for Just give much. it to him. like. But they wouldn't. They wouldn't give it to him. Jesus. So he raised $8,000, including a thousand from his mother, okay. not because she believed in what he wanted to do with like making a like sexual magazine, but because she believed in her son. Okay. Okay. Wait, so his goal at like he was raising money to do the he, sexual like, magazine. He to make his own magazine that uh, would kind of aid in like the sexual revolution. Okay. Kind of. He was kind of wanting to publish things that other people weren't. Is my understanding. Pushing the bar. Um, so the first issue of Playboy was published in 1953. And this seems bad. What I'm about to say. Okay. It featured Marilyn Monroe. N nude. Okay. From a shoot that she did when she was not known. And it was under a pseudonym. Okay. And the issue like blew up. Like went modern equivalent of going viral. viral yeah. But Marilyn Monroe never made a cent from it. Yeah, that's Which that feels like anti woman. Bad. That so that's strike one. Yeah. That's strike one for anti anti women. Did she know that she was gonna be published in this article? Good question. I don't know. Okay. Great question. Um <laughs> Hefner never met Monroe, but he did request to be buried in the crypt next to hers. And he is. Oh wow. Yeah. So they finally they did. Can you just like way. request that? Like, I, could I also request that? Like, could I does, be buried next to Jonathan Bailey? Is, yeah. How does that work? Like, who do you talk to about right. that? 
Okay, so then he started to get even bigger, Hugh and Playboy, because he published this story called The Crooked Man, which was rejected by Esquire, but he published it and then it popped the hell off. Do you think he was doing two jobs at this point or did he completely leave? Well, oh, he was leaving. He left Esquire. Because he raised the 8K. Because he raised that money. And it was kind of like, oh, I'll show you Esquire because I know this piece is good. And this is interesting. This is like a... Uh, so we have Marilyn Monroe in the cons for Hugh. Yeah. This is going to be a pro for Hugh. Esquire didn't publish it because it was a story about straight men being persecuted in a gay world. So it's kind of like reverse, like Twilight Zone zone type of society. Okay. And that's a pro for him? Oh, Hugh wait, so published he it. He published something saying... David wouldn't... Esquire wouldn't publish it because it was a statement about like how bad being homophobic is basically oh, it's like look okay. what you're doing like imagine if this happened to straight people yeah basically and so hugh was like i'm gonna publish that damn okay yeah that is a pro um so one pro, yeah. one con right now and then the magazine received like vi a lot of backlash for it but a lot of press too because okay. Um, and then Hugh said if it was wrong to persecute heterosexuals in a homosexual society then the reverse is wrong too so that's wow. Yeah. So then I was reading as I was reading, I was like, okay, multi-layered man. Yeah, kind of a good guy. Maybe if you think <laughs> no, about like, it. <laughs> well, maybe maybe he has some redeeming quality. Yeah. Okay. Now in the 1960s, Brett Hugh Hef even Hef Hef created uh, private key clubs that were racially diverse during the civil rights movement. Like he him clubs. He, or? I actually, what is a private key club? Let's, oh, I can look it up. Oh, right. key. I thought you were saying he. Private key club. All I've... No, not the cologne. <laughs> um, A nightclub that's only open to members and their guests. So I guess it was just like the civil rights era and he was opening like one of the first. And it allowed diverse not, people yeah, as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. First diverse. Pro for Hef. So I guess another pro for Hef and then he sent um, one of his employees, his name was Alex Haley, to interview one of the founders of the American Nazi Party. And that founder was mm -hmm. like, yeah, I would be happy for someone to interview me as long as they're not Jewish. And then Hef was like, okay, here you go. And uh, much to the Nazi young man's surprise it was a black young man okay. interviewing him so he was like yeah here so and was this so, kind of like was half like trying to set him up do you think kinda because he was like he's not jewish yeah but like obviously this man's a nazi okay so so like he's probably not gonna yeah. be thrilled as a white supremacist what at first when i heard that he was going to be interviewing a nazi i was you know, hesitant. Yeah. Um, but now that knowing what I know, I'm like, oh, half that actually, like, honestly, yeah, it kind of progressive. Like even. Hef was on the right side of the civil rights movement. Yeah. If I can, if I may say, and of herstory as well. Maybe not herstory. <laughs> not, <laughs> he might not have been on the yet. wrong side of herstory, <laughs> but, but civil, civil rights. Yes. He was sitting pretty. Um. Okay, around 1971, Brett, he has now admitted to being involved with quite a few members, um, uh, quite a few playmates, which were women that were f featured repeatedly in Playboy. And what is exactly a playmate? I think. Is that like a term specific to Playboy? Yeah, or? it's like the bunnies. And he was romantically involved with yes, them? Yes, But also you have to remember too. that his um, his wife now, maybe ex-wife, divorced, divorced yeah. Did give him permission. Yeah, he's a bachelor. So he's allowed but to do this. But in that being said, he is technically allowed, but it's probably wrong side of herstory, um, and like more of like a power yeah. dynamic issue yeah, to be involved that. with with the playmates. But that really, you know, I that, love that playmates. Was his, that like was I his love thing. that term. It's we fun. Can using yeah. It. He also admitted in 1971 that he experimented with bisexuality. Whoa. Yeah. Woo. Woo. So definitely interesting. I would have loved to see some male playmates. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then in 1985, he had a stroke. Jesus. Brett. He had to reevaluate his life, all the partying. Yeah. Made some life changes. Okay. His daughter took over uh, the like partying type of operations. Thank God. And he 
Really, Hugh, he was married at this point and had another child, really turned the uh, Playboy Mansion into a family-oriented wow. home. I mean, he made this house a home, okay? Were the playmates still living there? Or? Yes. Okay. I do want to say yes. Like, with the family, do you I think? I do want to say yes. I'm not positive, though. We need a documentary. I'm sure there is yeah, one. Yeah. Honestly, I kind of want oh, like a, a e, modern e, family style. E true Hollywood story profile. Yeah. We can watch the East true Hollywood story profile. Does, he have a, does half of a book... Let's see. I don't think he wrote one, but there's books about him. I wonder if any of the playmates have written they books. They have. Okay. They have. It's the, his most recent ex-wife, too, wrote one okay. after he was dead, and we'll get there, Brett. Okay. I'm okay? Excited. Yeah. So then here's kind of like his, his reputation at this point, okay? There was... Uh, an article that this woman published in the guardian that called Hugh a pimp Damn. and he was like, I'm not a pimp. And then the article was like, well, you're a man who like buys and sells women to other men. He's, so, <laughs> he's so like, okay, well I guess if you put it that way, by then- definition, you're a pimp. And so this was kind of like when his reputation started to turn and there were, was like a lot in the media um, about him, like, quote, cause causing irreparable damage by turning porn and therefore the buying and selling of women's bodies into a legitimate business. Yeah, that's kind Wrong of... Wrong side of her street. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of exactly like what I feel like a pimp is, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, his former girlfriend said that he would encourage competition and body image issues between his multiple live-in girlfriends. Damn. Yeah. His legacy is full of evidence of exploitation of women for professional gain. Basically, I mean, when you think about it like that, it's not good. It's not. It's like pretty bad. Yeah. Um, but he was also like a raging Democrat that fought for civil rights. I guess not raging. Raging Democrat is the wrong word. Raging liberal, True. I guess. Um, so he's a layered man. Moral of the story. Um, I guess t- two things can be true at once. He was on the wrong side of history, and he fought. He also fought for some good things. Yeah. So in in all, complicated guy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like you learned a lot about him? Yeah. No, I I honestly had like very little information on Hef going Mm -hmm. into this. Mm -hmm. And so do you feel like you have more respect for him? Not necessarily as like a person, but as like a figure after doing research because I'm like I feel like what he did he did like test the waters in a lot of ways and even though like a lot of it was like you know kind of shady and like not good I'm like he really was like doing things differently in that time he definitely was I definitely have a lot of respect for what he did um in terms of like the civil rights yeah but I can't really look look past the um the women part. Yeah, like the playmates. Yeah, that's tough. That is really tough. It's tough to look past, especially because so many of them have come out. And yeah. Been, like, it was so toxic. Yeah. And also just, like, in general, like, it, that look, it's bad. It's like, not a if you good take a look. step back, yeah, it's not look, a good at, look. look at Hef and the playmates, like, that can't, that cannot be good. Yeah. It just can't. I don't, like, you gotta call, he is a pimp. He's at a, the end of the day, pimp. he's just a pimp through and through. Yeah. So anyway, that's Hugh. So it's hard that's to even like for celebrate his wins where it's like, it is. well, I mean, it is, but I did think not. that piece about the Nazi guy was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know he was doing those types of interviews. Also Playboy had a lot of other stuff, which I learned yeah. like that Nazi interview and like short stories and stuff, which I didn't realize. Do you know how many Playboy magazines were published at that time? And also are they still being published or have we completely like Playboy that? still? <clears throat> There's no way it's still being published, is it? Have you ever driven? Oh, it's past gonna the bring back, bring it back with an annual edition. But I don't, I don't think it's still going. I also am curious. Like, obviously, these girls were like fully nude. I wonder if that was like fully consensual. That's a good question. That's a great question. I bet it was. There was like a lot of pressure on them. Yeah, I'm sure. So. Even if they might have agreed to it, can you still like can make really fully nude magazines? Like, what are any yeah, know? Oh, yeah, yeah. porn? Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's what that is. Okay, yeah, you ever heard of it? 
Um, I think I've like read about it before. I've done a Wikipedia deep dive on it. Yeah. But it's a um, and then Hef died at the Playboy Mansion in 2017. He was 91 and he had sepsis, which scares the shit out of me because he just had an E. coli is. infection. It's just like when an infection gets into your bloodstream. So like if you let any infection go on long enough, you can get sepsis. Okay. Which is really scary to me. Damn. Because that's like completely deadly. Now I'm going to leave thinking I have sepsis. I always think I have sepsis. Fuck. Yeah. Also want to flag um, as we move into the ALS portion of the Wikipedia deep dives. <laughs> if you have health anxiety, I'm like being really serious. This might not be awesome to listen to because it was like uh, obviously like it was really uh, deeply upsetting me. Just like, you know how it goes, girls. Um, so it might, might be something worth fast forwarding, but also Brett, do you have any deep dives that you want to share with us? I mean, you did like a way deeper dive on these subjects than I did. I did look up a little bit of research on three topics. Give us one. Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, book of the month. You guys know how much I love book of the month. I'm reading my last book of the month right now. Um, P.S. I hate you. And it was an early release. So I have gotten to read it a month before it's coming out and I'm obsessed with it and I am almost done and I can't wait to tell you guys about it. Okay. That's it on that. And I also love reading this time of year because you get to cozy up by the fireplace. There are always so many books to choose from in a store, but book of the month is curated to showcase new and emerging authors. So they're doing all the research for you and everyone picks from the same set of books. You can sign up with friends or discuss your thoughts within the book community. And now is the perfect time to take advantage of their holiday perks. Starting November 27th, new members get to try their first book for only $5 with code STUFFED. And there's a special Black Friday deal. All new members will be receiving a free gift with purchase while supplies last. Existing members will also receive a gift in their December box. You can give the gift of book of the month. Save up to $30 on gift memberships and check out their gifting page to learn more. If you guys are interested in trying Book of the Month, you can join and get your first book for just $5 with code STUFFED Black Friday weekend. And when you sign up, make sure to select Obsessed with Brooke in the survey. Again, head to bookofthemonth.com and use code STUFFED in all caps to get your first book in December for $5. Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Blue Land. The holidays are upon us. Food, friends, family, and cleaning? Our loved ones can be messy, and usually more mess leads to more waste, but not with Blue Land. Blue Land is on a mission to eliminate single use plastic by reinventing cleaning essentials to be better for you and the planet. In this holiday season, Blue Land is having its best sale of the year so you can save and shop sustainably for your friends, family, and yourself. All you do is pick out one of the forever bottles, fill it with warm water, drop in the tablet, and get to cleaning. Refills start at $2.25, and you don't have to buy a new plastic bottle every time you run out. You can even set up a subscription to buy in bulk so you never run out of the products you use the most. For a limited time, Blue Land's hand soap is getting a festive upgrade with a beautiful chocolate box inspired gift set with cozy scents like toasted vanilla, wintry pine, and sweet chestnut. It's the perfect gift to reduce waste. I love Blue Land and their mission because they're creating products that you have to buy, you can't get around buying cleaning supplies. Um, But they're giving us an opportunity to not waste while doing so. So it's really like killing two birds with one stone and I couldn't be more thankful personally. I also love the holiday scents that they have and they make the perfect gift so it feels like a cozy and warm and snuggly holiday season. To take advantage of their best sale of the year for up to 30% off your entire order, go to blueland.com slash OWB. You won't want to miss this. Blueland.com slash OWB. That's blueland.com slash OWB. Okay. Do you want to hear about, (laughs) we have uh, quicksand, Bigfoot or Alcatraz. I'm so curious. Or the, the Black Plague. Let's do Alcatraz. Okay. This one, honestly, is the one I did the most research research on. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Again, I just like fully copied and pasted a lot of things from Wikipedia. Um, But I just, I guess the interest with Alcatraz, I'm like, prisons are so like interesting to me, especially a prison that's like an island. I also have- Where is it? 
It's in San Francisco. Oh my God. It's a little island off of San Francisco. So you do have to take a boat to get there? Yeah, you can like take, and it's not active anymore, but like you can do like a ferry and then you oh. can like actually go inside Was it of it. Like, m- sorry, you're obviously going to tell me all no, this. No, it's okay. Like- I honestly would rather you ask questions and then I like, because again, it is just copy and pasted material. Sure. Was Alcatraz like max security for like high, 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 high up criminals? Yeah. So it actually started. <laughs> so it was actually created. Um, well, the reason they like made it, it used to be like a lighthouse yeah. in like about, you know, the 1800s. Yes. And then um, in 1859, Alcatraz was actually used to house soldiers convicted of crimes. And they created it because of the cold, strong currents of the waters of the San Francisco Bay. Because it's like you can't escape. Yeah. Because like, oh, you escape the prison and then it's like, oh, yeah, you have to swim. Yeah. And if you don't swim, you'll sink. Um, I'm just thinking about like the ferry to Alcatraz. Yeah. Well, now I kind of like want to take the ferry to Alcatraz. Because I did all this research. I'm so curious. Um, I'll just like hit some of like the main points here. They used it for military purposes um, during the Mexican-American War and would, like, have, keep their, like, artillery. That's a word, right? Yeah. Weapons? Yeah. yeah. Weapons. I'll just say weapons. <laughs> <laughs> they got their weapons there. Um, they had some, can- about 105 cannons by 1866. Um, Do we still use cannons? I don't know. Like, that can't be, like, the most effective it thing anymore. Be. And, like, how do you even use that cannon? Like, as you put, like... A massive ball? Yeah, and then you, like, light... For war. That's something yeah, I should have looked Yeah, cannons are still up. used in war today. Though the term cannon has declined in favor of more specific terms like uh, howitzer and mord- mordar. I, those both sound I'm, like I'm, slurs. Yeah, those I was going to say, like... I don't feel comfortable saying out of those. I'm going to stick to cannon. <laughs> but, oh, my God. Artillery, too. Well... That actually brings me, I'm going to talk about Bigfoot quickly. Uh, yes. Because um, yesterday, Brooke and I were doing our own respective research. And I said, can you say Bigfoot anymore? <laughs> like genuinely, like hand to heart, like do not know if I can say that or if that is like offensive to a community. And so that's actually what sparked my big Bigfoot research. And through my research, I found out you still, you can. You can? Luckily, you Although? can. Although? Although there was a... Um, this was someone writing in about it. Um, it's Scott Harper. And <laughs> in the description, it says three personal sightings done research, done years of serious research. And he said, I personally feel that it is this, which just says, is it like derogatory? I personally feel that it is. I strongly dislike the term. When speaking of the creatures, I use the term Sasquatch. Right. That feels more derogatory to me. Yeah, I know. That sounds like if someone... Like, if you if I called someone a Sasquatch, that's an insult. Yeah, no, I would be pissed off if someone yeah. called me a Sasquatch. Yeah. Like, that feels like an attack on my character. But, like, Bigfoot's like... Hey, Big, like, it's just, like, funny, yeah, it's lighthearted. Like, yeah, it's a pet name. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's also so insane that, like, Bigfoot is... what It, it says on Wikipedia that it's... Um, it says... Has grown into a cultural icon. Right. Like, damn, like, Bigfoot, like, really made it. He, he really went viral. And it is just because, like, people have, like, mistaken seeing him. Right. And then people are like, oh, it's a real thing. Yeah. I, like, really wish I knew someone personally who, like, genuinely believed in their heart Scott of Harper. heart. That, besides Scott Harper, <laughs> of course. That, like, Bigfoot is, like, a real creature. Um. Yeah, it could be nice to meet someone like that. The thing is, there are so many of them. We just don't run in the same circles, unfortunately. Yeah. But I'd love to cross paths. Wait, let me see if Scott Harper said anything. Um, All of a sudden, people everywhere picked up that horrible name and it only gained traction rather than going away. It's like fucked up that people are still saying Bigfoot genuinely. Genuinely. It says many native cultures attribute great. Oh, my God. I wish I could read. You can. No. Um, (laughs) It's also really hard. It also strikes me as a very poor way to acknowledge that by referring to the creature in such a dumb down, low brow manner. Dumb down, low brow manner. Fuck. Someone had to say it. And it had to be Scott Harper, who has seen Bigfoot three Three. personal times and has done years of serious research. Honestly, like Sasquatch and Bigfoot, like you could surely we could do better. Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you care about like the Loch Ness monster at all? Nessie. I also was thinking Nessie. Yeah. Is that a lot of people call, that are like more comfortable with her? Like, people <laughs> that are comfortable with Hef. Like so. Yeah. yeah. We'll just do Nessie for now. Damn. So yeah. can we say Loch? I think you can do Ellen and okay. Nessie. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, the like monster. A- I don't know how people would feel about. Like, is that just like a same thing as like Bigfoot, where people are like, we saw. The- the Loch Ness monster. Uh huh. Like, there's that's not real, right? I think right? it's like also clumped in with like mermaids too, where I think the origin is like sailors were dehydrated, yeah, and couldn't see, yeah. and we're like, holy shit, and it was like a dolphin or something, yeah, and and now we, and have, now we mermaids. have mermaids, mermaids, and and Nessie. Do you know anything about Johnny Appleseed? Like, while well, well, while we're here, <laughs> while we're here, who's Johnny Appleseed? Let's di- dive into that. I want to ask if you have anything uh, else about Alcatraz that um, you wanted to share. Let me see. Before we move into Johnny Appleseed, a live Wikipedia spiral. Um. Well, like, when did it end? Let's see. I do have that in here somewhere. Well, it was only during the twenty nine years it was in use. So, like, honestly, like, was not around for that right. long. Um. Al Capone was in Alcatraz, though. Oh my if god! You're familiar Whoa. and George Machine Gun Kelly. Which I was like, is that like Machine His Gun Kelly? Um, I think Machine Gun Kelly just like stole that from this guy. Why? And I think Machine Gun Kelly from George Machine Gun Kelly was just a guy who like killed a lot of people with a machine gun. Why would you? Why would Machine Gun Kelly of of Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly use that name? See, that's what's like a little. Why does Machine Gun Kelly? call while you look that up i'm just gonna say there were a total of 36 prisoners who tried to make an escape but no one actually escaped and most of them either were shot dead or drowned oh so yeah i guess that's like kind of like the point of alcatraz where it's like you can't get out yeah so what are you finding about the the, the stage (laughs) name comes from the nickname of a prohibition era gangster who's probably who you were referring to like are you allowed to like I know we have been saying what we're we can and can't say, but like, is he allowed to do that? Like, is that like kosher? I wouldn't think so. And now he's saying I got the name Machine Gun Kelly because of my rapid fire delivery when I was fifteen and started doing shows. No way. Right. It's probably just because it was rapid fire delivery. Right. There's no way. Do you mind looking up George Machine Gun Kelly after this? Like, how bad of a guy was he? Good question. Like maybe he was like a vigilante or something. Yeah. He was an American gangster. Um, oh, he's on the FBI website. Better known by Machine Gun Kelly, an American gangster from Memphis, Tennessee, active during the Prohibition era. Um, best known for kidnapping, an oil tycoon, and a businessman, and his gang collected a ransom. Oh. His crime also included bootlegging and armed robbery. Like, not to be like, he's fine. No, I was looking at be like, okay, it doesn't sound like that bad, though. <laughs> but I don't think he's like, I was thinking like serial killer. But no. Okay. Yeah. He just like, also, he like held a business man at ransom. Like, I I'm guess, like, that's yeah. not like. Well, I think people like can name themselves after gangsters. Yeah. But mur- a murderer would be a different story. And what exactly did Al Capone do? Awesome question. He was also a gangster and a businessman. He was also gaining notoriety during the Prohibition era. And he, I like don't know what his main thing was. Oh, he was the modern day Robin Hood. He made donations to various charities from the places that he stole from. What exactly does the modern day Robin Hood mean? You steal from the rich and give to the poor. Oh, yeah. Why was he locked up? Because he stole. Oh shit! And he, 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 yeah, he's regardless he of who it's from. Gangster Fuck. type of stuff. But like good gangster. So interesting. What exactly? <laughs> like now I'm just like trying to get to like the Impact root of everything. Evasion. Like what is? Can you just look up gangster <laughs> definition? Because <laughs> honestly, like these guys don't seem that bad. <laughs> and I, so I'm like, wait. A member of a gang of violent criminals, but I'm not, I guess the violence comes uh, with the armed robbery. Yeah. We should watch The Godfather. That's what it's about, right? Have you ever watched it? No. 
I can't like I feel like stuff like that, like watching like gangster movies, I have like a tough time with. Me too, bro. Did you ever watch The Sopranos? Is that gangster? That's what I meant. What did I say? The Godfather. I meant Sopr- The Sopranos. Okay, but I think but both maybe. The Godfather's gangster. Maybe we I do sound that. We so start with the mo- fucking like white saying gangster, like in a scary way. <laughs> Everything I'm saying sounds like a slur. <laughs> I know. Are we allowed to say gangster? I like, don't now know. Now I'm looking back. I know it is probably annoying for us like two privileged people to be like, are we allowed to say that? Are we allowed to say that? I genuinely just want to make sure I'm being respectful. No, truly. Um, I have no idea. I th- distri- uh, Distributing drugs too also is something that gangs do. Like I, Again, like not standing up for gangsters, but I'm like, <laughs> y'all could be doing worse. Like truly. And it does like Al Capone, Robin Hood. Yeah, like obviously I can do a, probably that was from one uh, <laughs> of his Wikipedia page. No, but I'm like the the main takeaway from this. I'm like Al Capone wasn't that bad of a guy. George Machine Gun Kelly like had good qualities. I'm also used to watching Criminal Minds, okay. where these people are so sadistic and evil and yeah. like are killers that these guys. I'm like, oh my god, like yeah, let's ha- let's go get high tea. No, truly, you know, I feel like. Gangsters these I need to stop saying gangsters. Um, but I feel like criminals these days are like more like insane. Like, like psychopath. Scary. Yeah. yeah. And again, like these just they're just gangsters. Like they're just Although back then people didn't know much about serial killers. So maybe that's why. I read this book, Brett. I feel like you it's like kind of giving the shards, although I don't oh my know. God. Brett's favorite book is it's the shards. So good. This book called The Alienist that was about like hunting like the first known serial killer in like the 1800s or something because we really didn't have a grasp on like what a serial killer was and like the fact that there was psychology involved yeah. there. It's some interesting stuff, Brett. Yeah. At least some interesting stuff. Something I do think about a lot, which might make me sound unwell, but it's like it was so much easier to be a ser- serial killer back in the day. Oh my god! Like yeah. imagine doing it no now. Tech. It's like yeah, exactly. Like you're fucked. The you're gas station, fucked. the cams are yeah, gonna get your ass. Fucked. Like you can't do anything. They can literally, if you are like <clears throat> masked to the gods, like robbing a gas station. Again, all of my information is coming from Penelope Garcia, the technical analyst in Criminal Mind. <laughs> but she could literally zoom in, like get the exact height. Yeah. Like figure out who in that radius is that height. And also who fits the profile of somebody who would rob a gas station and they could find them like that. It's like, it's hard as hell to be a criminal these days. Literally. Um, Were you obsessed with any, like, like I was obsessed with the Casey Anthony trial back in the day. mm, Were you? I didn't really pay attention. Were there any like trials or like big criminals you were into? Big criminals. Like any like court cases or... Honestly, I don't think so. Just criminal minds. Just criminal minds for me for now. Okay. Yeah. I think I just didn't have the patience to like watch any, like I watch court stuff. Yeah. I don't like court stuff. Yeah. I don't like understand the majority of the things they're saying ever. Like like I can't sit through those scenes for whatever reason. Did you watch the monsters? I, yeah, but I like wasn't engaged. Yeah. People were like, I love Cooper though. Like (sighs) beyond. Isn't he in something new that's coming out? Did I just see like a deadline article or or dateline? Deadline, dateline. He's holding a little life. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was holding the book A Little Life, um, which I guess doesn't mean anything. Yeah. But the author of the book posted him holding the book. That like means something. But if there are people have been saying like it would be a horrible decision to make a movie of that book because the book is like straight up torture porn. Okay. It is literally just like taking this one man and they're like, how can we make this man's life as horrible as possible? It's like torturing, truly torturing the main character of a book for okay. like 900 pages. Um, so you don't that think that being we need said like it a is it's definitely a tearjerker. Um, a lot of people have a lot of problems with it, which I, I can understand. <laughs> I can understand that for sure. Um, I will say I saw the play in London and yeah. thought it was really well done. Okay. I don't know. I don't think they could do that in a movie, though. 
Well, if they make a movie and Cooper Koch is in it, I will read the book. Okay, yeah. Because I know Brooke has been trying to get me to read it, but I think it's just like a little thicker than I'm used yeah, to. Yeah, it's a little bit thicker. I can't read that many pages. I also, this- it's just like so, like I feel like such a part of like pop culture almost now, which is okay. like crazy that like just read it to be in the loop. No, yeah, I thought you should have led with that. Like, obviously, if it's like a pop culture moment, I will. Which, like, now I'm like, it. now I'm feeling iffy about. Now I'm feeling iffy about it. It be, being a pop culture moment. Why is that? Because it's so bad, Brett. Like what he goes through. Yes. Can you tell me what did you write about it on Goodreads? Uh I was addicted to it when I read it because okay. I like I do this thing a lot where I read a book and I'm like that was the best thing I ever read and then I'll look at the reviews that are negative and I'm like oh fuck yeah <laughs> oh like, okay shit. I can def- yeah so that's what happened to me with a little life like I read it and I was like devastated obviously and was like this is the saddest thing I've ever read in my life like I'm like gonna end it all yeah but like I was like wow that was powerful and then I read the reviews and I was like oh maybe I had the wrong reaction. <laughs> What were everyone else's reactions? Like, this is just, like, evil. Okay. Yeah. Evil to do. Well. I don't remember, really. (laughs) Honestly, I read it when it came out in... I was in college when I read it, so I don't really remember much. Okay. But... Honestly, this is inspiring me to read it. So we can, like... We can talk about it. Yeah. Oh, it it is so brutal. Should we just get into ALS? (laughs) (laughs) You're, like, um... Her eye, what's it called? Why can I not cursor is like yeah, hovering dangling. over the like. Over it. Do you want to do, do you want to do ALS or Judy Garland? Which one do you feel like your heart is in more? I have to be so honest with you when you, <laughs> you said you did Judy Garland. I don't, you I don't couldn't even, even tell you. <laughs> that could be she anyone like to Dorothy me. Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. Okay. So it's like kind of relevant. When you said it yesterday, I didn't have the heart to tell you because you were like excited. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe I won't do ALS because it's going to make me it. It's going to make everyone upset. Um, But now you just did like so much ALS research. I will say I did do a lot of ALS research, but honestly, I'm I'm glad I did it. It's uh, a good disease to know about. We should be raising awareness for ALS. And if anybody knows the best place to donate, let me know because I couldn't really find it. And obviously I tried to sign up for an ALS walk. Yeah. And they're, the closest one is in San Francisco. Would you consider doing an ice bucket challenge or no? <laughs> I already did, Brett. Oh, okay, great. Of course great. I did the ice bucket challenge. But um, so if you guys feel inspired to go on an ALS Wikipedia spiral by yourself, do that. I will. I do want to touch on Lou. Oh my God. I just realized I've never said his name out loud. Lou Gehrig. 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 I don't know how, um, yeah, Lou. I'll just, I can do Lou. Just do Lou in half. He was like the first like huge public figure to have ALS. Brett is breaking my heart reading about this. He was like one of the best ball players of all time. I don't know if you know that. They Mm -hmm. called him the iron horse because he could just hit that ball out of the freaking park. And then all of a sudden, like one day he just like stopped being able to hit it as well. And no one knew why. And it, like the commentators were like, it has to be something physically must be wrong because he is hitting it perfectly. Like he has the exact same form. Yeah. It's just something is not propelling the ball. Um, So then he went to the Mayo Clinic and in order to get diagnosed with ALS, you basically have to just rule everything else out first. So that's what they did. And so he's diagnosed with ALS. Is that still the case or do we have? No, we still don't have great diagnostic tools, Brett. What is like going on in your body if you have ALS? Like, is it more like muscular? Your neurons are dying. Okay. So it's like they just stop telling your body, stop communicating with your body. Essentially, you just lose function. Does it usually start in one place? Or good question. It uh, it can start in a lot of different places, Brett. But I think a lot of it starts like in the arms, if I'm not mistaken. And then there's the kind I think that starts in like with your breathing, which is more, which is the worst prognosis because eventually you're like your lungs, you can't breathe, which is how like you die of ALS. It's just like everything kind of stops working. So a lot of people who have ALS in wheelchairs. Okay. I think most it's, it progresses. So like when you're diagnosed, you could just like 
have like a loss of movement in like one hand, I think. And then as time goes on, you oh are God. like bound to a wheelchair. Um, and most people, like when you're diagnosed, only live like two years. Is there like anything you can do to stop it? Or is it just like you just have to? No, like, which is what's like that's, really yeah. scary. And 90 to 95 percent of it is just like chance. Like not really, gen I think only a small portion is like genetic. Genet okay. Yeah. Do you know how many people each year are diagnosed with ALS? Oh, Brett, that's a great question. Just so I can take that number how and divide it by the population and see what my chances are. A year are diagnosed. 5,000. Okay. So that's not a lot. And usually you don't like get it until you're older, but there is a lot, there are cases of young people having it. Like Lou died when he was 37. Damn. Yeah. So anyway, back to Lou for a second. He delivered this speech, Brett, um, in between uh, some sort of game. Like, I don't know if they have intermissions yeah. or what, but he delivered a speech at intermission <laughs> that people are now call before like curtain closed, yeah, before curtain close before act two. <laughs> um, that is now called the luckiest man on the face of the earth. That speech. Cause there are only four sentences of the speech that exist in recorded form. Did you, and here they are. Listen. Oh my God. It, no, I didn't. I just, I oh, just okay. have it via text. Um, he said that he considers himself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. When you look around, wouldn't you consider it a privilege to associate yourself with such fine looking men as are standing in uniform in this ballpark today? I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Thank you. The crowd like stood and applauded for almost two minutes. No. I have like... New York Times said that it was the one of the most touching scenes ever witnessed on a ball field and that it made even hard blood reporters swallow hard. Damn. And oh my God, this is this is the last thing I'll say about Lou. He was he loved his wife and his wife loved him, Eleanor, and she never remarried. Mm. And she said, I had the best of it. I would not have traded two minutes of my life with that man for 40 years with another. Why is that like a little... She dedicated the remainder of her life to supporting ALS research. Damn, dude. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I would love to get involved with the cause. Yeah. But the ALS um, Association website did not make it clear enough for me. Well, I would, do, what, what I would love to do a walk is. with you. Yeah, we should. You said there's no local ones. Um, not that I could find, but we I could look, travel. I could look harder. Wait, there was also something I wanted to flag to you that could increase your chances of ALS. That could increase my chances of ALS? Yeah. So apparently it's like, it's an interaction. Your chances of getting it are an interaction between an individual's genetic risk factors and cumulative lifetime exposures to environmental factors. Okay. Some of the environmental factors that are associated with developing ALS include heavy metals, so lead and mercury, okay. which like, I don't, How do I, like, I don't know. I feel like I'm not around a lot of that, but like chemicals, so like pesticides, electric shock, physical injury and smoking. Holy fuck. Smoking. <laughs> so I wanted to flag that to you. Okay. But also I'm like, I'm not, I don't think, I think the, the general consensus is that we really just don't know how you get okay. ALS. Well, again, I'm I not think really... it's kind of, they're just like, it's a theory. Yeah. I'm feeling good about like, I feel like I stay pretty far away from like heavy metals yeah. and chemicals, but like what type of chemical, maybe, <laughs> maybe I mean, if you get in like the, the nitty gritty of the chemicals, then like maybe I am. Damn. I don't know. It's really, uh, I kind of want to see if you can find like the audio from Lou's speech. Let's see right now. Lou. Eric. Oh my God. Luckiest. It's called. Some people call it Lou Gehrig's. Disease. Yeah. Oh my god. Sorry, this burp sounds horrible. <laughs> That's fine, Brett. It sounds so bad. I don't mind it. Okay. With amazing mark by playing in twenty one hundred and thirty consecutive oh. games, then a fatal disease attacked Luke baseball's says. Iron Man in Yankee Stadium. Touched to tears by the tribute, Gehrig made his last public appearance. 
For the past two weeks, you've been reading about a bad break. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. When you look around, wouldn't you consider it privilege to associate yourself with such a fine looking man as a standing in uniform in this ballpark today? But I might have been given a bad grade, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Thank you. Like, Mm-mm. is there a Lou Garrick movie? Oh, the Pride of the Yankees, Brett. Oh my what god! What are you doing tonight? It was made in 1942. Oh my god! We've got to watch this. How do we watch it on the TV? Oh, okay. <laughs> Where to watch Peacock <gasps> for free? Oh my okay, god, yeah, we know what we're doing. Yeah. Tonight. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Where to watch Toby Maguire's Spider Man? Sorry, y'all are good. Um, recent searches, <laughs> yeah, so that is that. And I also want to say that, um, I have I'm obviously on ALS. TikTok. Yeah. And there are so many people who have made like such a wonderful community that have ALS, um, which is very inspiring. Yeah. And they don't look at it as a death sentence. And I think that's something to keep in mind that, you know, there can be hope. So Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. So anyway, Judy Garland. Um Basically, that was just Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz, okay. Brett, and she lived a tough life. Damn. Which I didn't know. I didn't know how tough her life was. But um, if you guys want to look into it, I encourage you to. Um, it's really sad also. But I'd like to go visit her at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Yeah. I'm actually going to request to be buried to be next, buried to, next her, to her because you can do that. Yeah. I could sandwich, be sandwiched in between her and half. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. That's ideal. Damn, I'm like really upset about Lou. I know. <laughs> the energy. <laughs> I know. I like cannot like <laughs> stop thinking about anything besides like I only thinking about Lou right now. <laughs> the energy. I don't give a fuck about half anymore. Like room. it's just like, damn, Lou. Damn. All right. On that note, let's let's end ALS let's, and we'll we'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> let's end ALS let's and this, end episode. this episode and we'll see you next week. Love you, Brett. Thank you for coming. Love you. Thanks so much for having me. I'm glad we're finally able to like speak me freely too. to each other me without too. I, having thank an God. immense amount of anxiety. Thank God. I am too. Yeah. It's been such a pleasure getting Truly. to know you. All right. Love y'all. Love. <laughs>